From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Levanka, and welcome to this special edition of Studio Bergen. We're going to break from our usual routine this month, and we'll do it again for our September episode, as we devote an entire episode to an interview with a special guest, the interim president of Bergen Community College, Dr. Jose Adamas. He, of course, is no stranger to this show, as he was our first guest on Studio Bergen in our usual in-studio segment back in October. So, Dr. Adamas, welcome to the show, thank and you thanks for, for coming. Thank you for having me again. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming. So, let's get right into it. Uh, it's been seven months mm -hmm. since you took over as interim president here at uh, the state's largest community college. Uh, how have those seven months been? And let's just kind of reflect a little bit on them. Well, they've been really very exciting, quite frankly. Um, I was the academic vice president for a year prior to assuming this responsibility as interim president of the college. So my knowledge of the institution, of the people at the institution, not only in the academic side of the house, but through all parts of the institution, um, was really quite, quite good. So that was really a wonderful experience to have that knowledge uh, there, to meet the people, to see the facilities, to see and understand what are the critical issues that are impacting the college. And where is it that the institution needs to improve what are the great things that the institution has already, and what kinds of things I can do in my position as interim president. So for me, again, serving as interim uh, is a wonderful opportunity. There are challenges, mm -hmm. no doubt, but Bergen Community College, as I've, I have said in numerous forums, is a great institution. It's an institution that has excellent academic programs, that has excellent faculty and staff that are dedicated to students with some things that we need to change and that I've already initiated some changes. I think we will improve our service to the community, the quality of our, of our programming, and the kinds of experiences that students get when, when they leave us. So there, it is very exciting. It's a tremendous opportunity to, to initiate some things that I think will improve the quality of the institution, what students receive, uh, when they exit the institution, as well as, of course, it comes with challenges. Mm -hmm. comes with headaches, comes with problems, comes with issues, but it's all good in part uh, because I have an excellent team mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the cabinet, in the president's cabinet, that have been here a number of years at the institution, that work with me very well, and then other individuals at the institution that are very committed to, to the work of, that we're here for, which is for the students. We'll get into some specifics about, you, you talked about some challenges and some mm -hmm. great programs that we're developing and things, uh, but these seven months, have they been a whirlwind? You know, have they gone quick? I, does it feel like um, it's just, it's unbelievable that we're already um, in February? Very much so. It, it feels that way. Um, I use the word exciting and, and you may hear me repeat it several times because I enjoy coming to work because uh, Sometimes it's different. Uh, things that you didn't anticipate um, that you'll be working with uh, come up, but it's very exciting. It's a tremendous opportunity. There are just wonderful things here at the institution that are going on, and I'm so pleased to be a part of, of those things. Um, yes, there are challenges. It is a whirlwind to some degree, and I look back and, and reflect in seven months, and I say it feels like it was yesterday mm -hmm. that I was asked to do this, but there are so many things that have occurred in those seven months, so many changes that we've made, um, refocusing the work of the institution to the business of teaching and learning that I think is, is the heart of why we're here as a community college, reaching out to the local community, to the business community, working with the county as well. And essentially, my first task was to settle the institution. Mm -hmm. You know, there, was, there were certain situations that were occurring prior to me arriving and taking the leadership role and the first thing that I wanted to do was, let's refocus. Why are we here again? What's the mission of the institution? What is the vision that we have? Why is it that students come? Why is it that they pay their tuition? Why is it that the county gives us money? Let's focus in on that first. Okay. Um, talk about, for a little while, making the jump 
Mm -hmm. You talked about being an academic vice president, uh, which obviously focuses on a specific issue at the college, perhaps the most important issue at the mm -hmm. college, that being academics. But uh, president focuses on the entire institution, mm -hmm. not just academics, but as you alluded to, the business community, um, promotion. I, I mean, there's just so many other things that a president has to worry about, facilities. Right. I mean, uh, talk about making that jump and what that's been like. It, it wasn't a big jump. Uh, some people think, well, you were the academic vice president, uh, you were only dealing with academics, but in reality, as the academic vice president, you deal with a lot of other things beyond teaching and learning what's in the classroom. Uh, so for me, it was a great opportunity serving as academic vice president, and as I indicated before, I really had an opportunity as academic vice president to be engaged with all segments of the institution, whether we're talking about finance mm -hmm. and budgeting, whether we're talking about facilities, whether we're talking about continuing education, we're talking about um, the foundation as well, really in student services in particular. Um, I had a great um, experience as an academic vice president, in part because of my background as well as the assignments that, that I was given. My portfolio continued to grow and grow as I was academic vice president, um, including the fact that we obtained a major federal grant, which is Title V, Hispanic Serving Institutions, which is the, uh, the grants project is 123 Connect. Mm -hmm. And that grant uh, focuses on retaining students at the institution. As a byproduct of that, it involves the academic world, it heavily involves student services, mm -hmm. it heavily involves registration, it heavily involves other segments of the institution so that grant gave me an opportunity to be involved with many players of the institution that normally I would not be involved with. And it really helped me to get a better balance and understanding of other issues of the institution besides teaching and learning in the academic world. So that being said, um, the transition itself was not you know, so, such a, a big change for me. I didn't feel that. Plus, it, it, this was an opportunity for me to bring in cabinet members mm -hmm. that I wanted to have as part of my team. These are individuals that I thought had the expertise and the experience to do the work that they're doing so well right now. They help me mm -hmm. uh, with things that I'm not familiar with. Uh, so in the short time that we've uh, been here seven months, I think we've done a, a really a great job of addressing those key issues that the institution internally needs to address. And that was really my primary focus for a period of time of months at the institution, working with the Board of Trustees, working with my cabinet, addressing issues that were so clear that we needed to address immediately. Then, after I think that, that we settled that a little bit mm -hmm. and still continuing, uh, now my focus has changed to the outside. I, I want to work with the foundation and continue to work with the foundation and reaching out to supporters of the institution. I want to continue to work with con continuing education in terms of reaching out to the business world. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit further uh, with regarding continuing education and some recent changes that, that have occurred. So my focus is, is, is quite broad, still dealing with the internal, but I have a great team that is working on that and now focusing a lot more on what's happening on the outside, making sure that, that the freeholders mm -hmm. know that we are here as an institution, that we are a quality institution, that we run a very efficient uh, and tight ship here at the, uh, at the institution, uh, that the taxpayers in the county that help support the institution recognize that we are a quality institution. And again, that we, are, we run a tight ship, that we care about mm -hmm the budget, that we care how we use dollars, uh, that we're efficient, and that we are successful, and that our students are successful when they exit the institution. Of course. Do you, do you think, um, looking at it from your perspective, you've been in higher education uh, ostensibly your, your entire career, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> whether as an educator or uh, administrator, um, at some of your previous institutions, again, public mm -hmm. institutions, uh, right. whether it's Kane, whether it's Union County College. Um, talk about that a little bit. How do you think that um, prepares somebody for a role like being the president uh, of a public institution? Well, I, I was really um, pleased to be at Kane. I was at Kane University for 16 years uh, in different uh, positions, first as a faculty member, 
And I think serving as a faculty member and getting that background of being in the classroom, going through the process of retention and promotion, mm -hmm. that really set the foundation for me and really helps me in so many ways that, um, that I'm clear. I understand the role of academics. I understand the role of faculty. Uh, at Kane University, uh, there was a faculty union that mm -hmm. was very... Uh, that it was very strong. Uh, I served, still is. <laughs> still is. I served uh, a year as the vice president, one of the vice presidents. They had two vice presidents in the union. And again, that helped me to better understand contractual matters uh, as well. So, and then I moved on to, to the administration, the dark side, some mm -hmm. people say, of uh, higher education. Um, and again, that was, that was great. I was a director of a program, associate dean, and then dean of liberal arts. Uh, and that was really a marvelous opportunity because at that point, Kane was changing. We were reorganizing liberal arts into the School of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, and then we established a, a School of Arts that included the theater and the fine arts area. Um, and I worked very closely with those faculty members and their accreditation. Uh, so all of that was just a marvelous experience for mm -hmm. me to get. Then I go to to Union County College, and it's a different setting, a different environment, different focus, and that was really wonderful as well. Uh, great administrative uh, experience there, again, working with, with what I call colleagues, faculty members and, and staff members and administrators there. And then I come here, and, I, and all of that experience that I had um, in, in 24 years at those two institutions, I bring here to this institution. So I, I come not as a novice, I come with someone with uh, a lot of understanding, a lot of understanding of higher education, a lot of understanding of contractual matters, a lot of understanding beyond academics uh, as well. And I think it's really helped me quite, quite well. One point that I might make sure. <clears throat> is to distinguish, because you asked a question about Union and, and Kane. Sure. You know, when I came to Bergen, I had heard all these positive things about Bergen Community College, about the quality of their programs, uh, and the faculty as well. Um, and I found all of that here, no question about it. And I found a sense and a tone uh, and, an, and, uh, and, and a focus among the faculty, amongst the faculty, about the importance of teaching and learning and professional development that reminds me on a regular basis when I was at Kane University and I was working with university professors that did scholarship, mm -hmm. that did writing, the conference presentations. We have all of that, mm -hmm. but in a two-year college setting. So we have faculty that are dedicated towards those things, students transferring to four-year institutions, and yet we have short-term programs that are certificates, that are certificate of achievement, that are short-term. The students are here a year and they graduate. So we have this mix, but we have what I call this university kind of an approach that I really value and I think is wonderful uh, that you don't find mm. at other community colleges in New Jersey. That's an interesting perspective. Um, I, I've heard it once, I've heard it twice, um, I've heard it a million times that students come out of Bergen more prepared uh, than other community colleges. Um, so it's actually interesting to hear uh, you say that, uh, that you kind of view it uh, as this university community college. If it well, were. I think that, you know, Colleges and universities have a role to play, mm -hmm. a significant role, in terms of educating our young people and those that are returning uh, that may have been away from high school for a period of time. We provide them the academic preparation, but a college setting like a university setting also has a social part of mm -hmm. it as well. And at, at Bergen, just as I saw the other day with club fairs that we had, students have an opportunity to, to be engaged in co-curricular activities beyond the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a value. Uh, students have an opportunity to work with and speak with and, and have our faculty serve as mentors mm -hmm. for them as well, to have administrators serve as mentors for students. So we want students at Bergen to get the full experience, full experience not only in terms of a, a clear and, and excellent academic preparation, but we want them to get the entire college experience. We don't have dorms, mm -hmm. that's different. But and that's just have, part of New Jersey Community it, Colleges. It, that's it's it's what it is. is. You know, maybe if you go to, to Florida, there may be, you know, Miami Day that may have <clears throat> had dormitories, but that does not mean the students cannot get a full college experience. And that's what we encourage students to do: is to take advantage 
of the fact that they're in an excellent institution that has co-curricular activities, has student life that has excellent programs as well, and get that full experience. Not every student is interested in transfer, right. by the way, just to make sure. We serve that role as well. That's why we have AAS degrees, which, and we also have certificate and certificate of achievement uh, programs that are shorter term. And we have an excellent continuing education program that offers customized training, short term training, for those that need or desire to have that experience as well. We'll talk about our students a little bit more after the break, and we'll talk about some of the specific things that have been going on at Bergen uh, in the last seven months with Dr. Adamas serving as the interim president. We'll be right back after a short break. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. Welcome back to Studio Bergen. I'm Larry LaVanca. Today we have our interim president, uh, Dr. Jose Adamas, here in the studio, uh, talking with me about a variety of things uh, in his last seven months here at the college. Uh, before the break, we were talking about student life and its importance to the college. Uh, a very important event was in October of last year when Dr. Mm -hmm. Adamas uh, cut the ribbon on the new student center. So let's talk a little bit about that. What was that experience like well, and would, putting student life really front and center at the institution? That was really very exciting. I, I, I still remember uh, the faces of the students that were there, uh, how excited they were with the opening. Uh, it was also a great opportunity to have some other individuals, some supporters of the institution. We had freeholders there. We had the county exec, Kathy Donovan, there. We had board of trustees members there. Uh, but the focus was really settled on the students. Uh, and as we walked into the student center after doing the opening on the front, and it, uh, it, I think it was just wonderful. And of course, since it was a wonderful event, the sun was shining. It was a great day. And there was uh, rain in the forecast, too. There was rain in the forecast, but we said it's not going to rain. And, uh, and it didn't rain. Uh, so we went inside, uh, took a look at the facilities. Uh, there were opportunities to, to walk through the facilities, uh, see them. Uh, it's really a great opportunity for students, and it's wonderful. You know, we've, we, with the renovations, we were able to provide new spaces mm -hmm. for student clubs, for uh, student government association, for our newspaper mm -hmm. editors, the Torch, uh, for other clubs at the institution. Um, in addition, an area for students to be able to just relax mm -hmm. and think and chat and talk and discuss things, plug in their laptops. Um, you know, the other day I saw students with guitars out there. Um, great. That's what, that's what a student center is. That's right. And you know, the, the, the most wonderful comments that I've gotten is, this feels like a student center. That's good. This feels like a college center. This really gives the tone of the institution because it's also the entrance That's right. to the institution. And as you enter, it's bright. Lots of windows. Opportunities to drink coffee, to do other things. There are tables where you could eat there and chat. Uh, again, plug in your laptops or, uh, or other things that you'd like to plug in. Um, and it's great. And uh, it becomes really the face of the institution, the entrance to the institution. The previous entrance was a little bit dark and it was okay as we renovated the space, but uh, just as many other universities and colleges have, they try to find a focal place That's right. and say, what, what will represent the institution? It's there. And you know the other thing that I just love and I saw it again this morning as I, as I walked up the ramp is we have life-size representations of students happy, which our students generally are. Um, and who are these students? Mm -hmm. These are real students. Right. These are students that we asked and they volunteered to put their life size uh, in color, uh, pictures of themselves uh, in movement. And as you walk through, going up the ramp, you feel like these people are walking with you. Yes. 
up the ramp uh, yes. as well. And for so. those students, it really kind of becomes a legacy. Years from now, uh, maybe those things will still be up, yep. and uh, they'll be able to say, you know, to their kids, uh, exactly. who will hopefully, hopefully come to Bergen someday. Um, but that, that I think it's great. I mean, just this week, there were uh, student clubs uh, that were there. They had tables. Um, it was packed packed with students, packed with uh, leaders of the, the clubs that were recruiting students. Mm -hmm. And that's all part, as, as I was saying previously, about um, higher education and the experience of higher education right. that we would like our students to take away. And I understand. We're a community college and we're a commuter campus. Uh, and I understand that students have, have other things. They have a life. Right. And sometimes they come, they take their class, and they go home. You know. But we encourage students to take advantage of these other, these other opportunities uh, that are there so that they can broaden their experiences at the institution. One other thing that I might add in, in terms of that same topic is that we run, through student services, a wonderful opportunity for co-curricular activities mm -hmm. for students. Students can do co-op. Students could serve as uh, mentors for other students. Students can have internships. Mm -hmm. Students can have jobs if they're eligible to be work-study students at the, institutions, at the institution, students can run for positions in the student senate, mm -hmm. in student government, in leadership positions, as well as club leaders. So there are all these great opportunities beyond mm -hmm. what happens in the classroom with the students. Who are the mentors? Who are the advisors for these? There are professionals. There are faculty, there are administrators, there are staff that volunteer their time to do this. I remember last semester uh, being invited to say a couple of words to the Korean club. Um, and I walk in and all these students, not Korean only, a mix of students, mm. because that's what you find in our clubs as well. Regardless of whether it's a Korean, Hispanic, or whatever it may be, you'll find a distribution of students in those clubs. So I walk in, there are Hispanic students, African American students, other students that are in, in the room because they're all members of this. And in walks the faculty uh, representative or advisor, Mina, Dr. Mina An, mm -hmm. um, a wonderful instructor, someone that is dedicated to students and has her own story of how she came from Korea and you know, with her family and where she is now so successful. That's what Bergen is. It's certainly the student life experience, the academic experience, but it's those individual stories of success. And the model that Dr. Mina An serves for not only Korean students, but for all students as well. Uh, apropos that we're talking about students um, and uh, the rebirth of the student center and our vibrant student life program that we have, uh, one of the biggest initiatives or one of your biggest focus mm -hmm. uh, points for uh, your seven months here has been uh, revamping student services and improving services for students and uh, really making it a more um, student-friendly uh, mm -hmm. approach. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I think student-friendly is, is the right word to use. Um, I think we have a dedicated staff in student services. Uh, I think we needed to rethink what is the vision in student services. So we've, we've refocused our, our efforts. I've, I've made some administrative changes within there. Uh, I've asked to, to be more customer driven. Mm -hmm. um, we've done things that uh, include more material that is in print, more uh, engagement uh, with students. Uh, I've changed the actual physical layout uh, as suggested by the Chief of Student Services, uh, Ann Loda, and you know the, the effect has been excellent. People now see it as more transparent, that you can walk from one end of student services to the other end of student services without ever stepping out. Doors that were closed, we've opened. Uh, spaces that were kind of uh, bulky and, and not customer friendly, those are gone. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken down some walls. Um, we've, we've worked with the, uh, the administrative staff and, and professional staff just to make, remind all of ourselves that we're here for, for one reason. We're here to help students. And that, that's part of what, um, what we've done. 
obviously proud of, of those uh, initiatives. Uh, what are some of the other things that in these seven months you've really, mm -hmm. we talked about the STEM grant earlier, that's sure. obviously something that you'd like to point to, but what else have been some of those programs and initiatives that have really stuck out for you? Well, let me just mention back to student services. Sure. That we, we, we changed the title of One Area of Student Services to be called the Center for Student Success because that kind of focuses our attention. This is why, why we're here. In terms of other areas of, uh, of the institution, we found a physical space for the Judith K. Wynn School of Honors. Uh, it, it's really uh, a significant part of the institution. The fact that we have students that are eligible to be honor students and the fact that we establish this and we actually find them a physical space in the administrative area of the institution is wonderful. We also found a part-time secretary uh, to be able to be there, plus the faculty and students that are in the room as well. And as we know, the honors program is a growing program. Um, the academic vice president is working with them in terms of looking at the future of honors, where it's going to be, what kind of program is going to, to exist. So I'm really looking forward to that report. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a committee that we've put together with the faculty senate that is really very supportive of this, so that we establish a solid honors program. At, uh, at Bergen. Uh, that's one, I think, one of the major initiatives that I would like to, to have as a legacy here when I leave uh, Bergen. Um, so we've done those, those, kinds of, uh, those kinds of efforts. With the STEM grant, mm -hmm. um, which is a major federal grant that we've received, which is $3.7 million over five years, the focus of that grant is to encourage more students to go into science, technology, engineering, and math at the institution, coupled with encouraging more students that are in education to consider going into the sciences as well, especially minority students and, and women, um, because there's a huge gap uh, in need for those that are coming out of the school district, coming out of the school systems like ours, who are interested in teaching, that are going into biology, that are going into chemistry and other, other areas in the sciences as well. That will have a major impact on retention of students, and I think students moving on in the fields of science. Hmm. We're almost out of time, believe it or not. You know, time flies on Studio Bergen. Um, let's look at the spring semester a little bit, sure. some of the big events. I mean, we've got a bunch of uh, recognition months, whether it's Black History Month in February, Women's History Month in March. We've got all of our end-of-the-year activities, uh, some foundation events. Let's talk a little bit about that as we uh, come to a close here for this episode. Well, I'd like to mention the foundation. Of, you know, the, the work of... Uh, of the, of the foundation board um, is such an es essential part of Bergen Community College, such an essential part. These are volunteers, mm -hmm. people with business experience, people that uh, are entrepreneurs, people that, that come from different walks of life that dedicate their time to this. And the money that is used, that is uh, generated in the foundation is used for scholarships. So there are up some, some upcoming events uh, there's a golf outing that is coming up uh, very in June. soon yep. in June, and we look forward to to uh, to that uh, event uh, taking place. Uh, and there are some others that I encourage our viewers to go on the website, uh, look under the foundation, and look at some of the other events that are coming up. Uh, again, uh, principally these events are for raising money for scholarships. There's a scholarship awards dinner mm -hmm. that's coming up. Uh, I was there last year, and I must tell you there wasn't enough space in the room. It was in, held in the largest room that we have at the institution and yet people had to stand up uh, because it wasn't large enough. That's the number of students that we have that are scholarship awardees and those are, that's the number of people that we have that have contributed scholarships that want to be part of that event. Nothing more important than uh, providing the means for our students Absolutely. to come to school. Absolutely. Dr. Damas, that's all the time we have, believe it or not. So thank There's you. There's much more that I wanted to say, but <laughs> <laughs> next well, time. We will absolutely have you back on the show thank uh, you. when we have our next interview segment. Thanks for watching Studio Bergen this month. We'll be back next month as we look at what's happening during the spring 2012 semester at Bergen. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to visit us at facebook.com slash Bergen Community College. Take care, and thanks.